this video, I'm giving myself a coding challenge and attempting to build the game of Brick Breaker in one hour. Now, I'm going to do this using Python and Pygame, and I just want to clarify here that I've not written any of this code before. I don't already know how to make Brick Breaker. This is a new game that I've never made before, and I haven't even really thought about this program. This is meant to be kind of me just thinking off the top of my head, doing everything completely from scratch and giving you kind of a taste and feel of what it's like to actually design a program like this completely from scratch. Now, obviously, I'm not going to add a ton of cosmetics or go crazy on the user interface. This is going to be focused on building out that core game logic, and hopefully I can complete that in one hour. In this video, ideally, you should learn how I actually structure a program, how I think about different problems, how I set up classes, objects, functions, methods, etc., how I deal with problem solving. Hopefully, you guys can get a ton of value from this video. Now, as I said, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do this in 60 minutes. I will try my best. But one thing I am sure about is the sponsor of this video. Before we get started, I need to thank PyScriptor for sponsoring this video. PyScriptor is a free and open source Python integrated development environment with all the features you'd expect in a modern IDE. It's also natively compiled for Windows to use minimal memory with maximum performance. PyScriptor comes with features designed to enable smooth and efficient Python programming. These features include a syntax highlighting editor, an integrated Python interpreter, full Python debugging with support for remote debugging, integrated unit testing, and integration for Python tools like PyLint, TabNanny, and Profile, and so much more. PyScriptor users can run or debug files from memory and use a code editor, to-do list, find and replace, and integrated regular expression testing. Get started with PyScriptor today for free by clicking the link in the description. Thanks again to PyScriptor for sponsoring this video. So I'm here on the computer and I just wanted to play a basic version of Brick Breaker here to show you what I'm kind of trying to create. Uh, this version has a bunch of power ups and stuff that I'm not going to be adding. Like I'm not going to add these kind of features to the game or have multiple balls or any of that stuff. Uh, we're just going to go with kind of the basic version where you have a single ball and you're trying to destroy all of the tiles on the screen. So pretty straightforward game. I should be able to do this in one hour. Now, before I start the timer, I will quickly say that I do have a programming course. It's called programmingexpert.io. If you're interested, you can use discount code TIM. It teaches Go, Python, has over 300 practice questions, a bunch of awesome projects. It teaches software design, software engineering tools. If you want to get better at programming, really, it is the best place and allows you to get better very, very quickly. Check it out from the link in the description. Uh, but with that said, let's start the clock and start coding. So the first thing I need to do here is import Pygame. I'm then going to create a display. So let's say width, height is equal to and then let's just go with like 800 uh, by 600 for our screen size i'll then say win is equal to pi game dot display dot set underscore mode uh, and then we'll go with width and height well, then we're going to say win or pi game dot display dot set underscore caption well, let's set this to brick breaker like that uh, now one note i have been coding in javascript a lot recently i actually haven't written any python code in probably like three or four uh, weeks so if you notice me using a bunch of like semicolons and parentheses that's probably why okay so we have uh, this set up next i'm going to need my main event loop so i'm going to say define main i'm going to say while run let's go here and say run is equal to true we'll say while run for event in pygame.event dot get if we could type properly here i'm going to say if event dot type equals equals pi game dot quit then i want to say run equals false i want to break okay then i'm going to say pi game dot quit and quit like that then we're going to say if underscore underscore name equals underscore underscore main underscore underscore then main okay now we just want a basic draw function so i'm going to say define draw i'm going to say win dot fill and then let's just fill this with a white background color that's what we'll go with for now then we'll say pygame dot display dot set or dot update like that okay continuing here let's call this draw function so let's say draw i'm gonna to have to pass the window to it here so we'll take in win and then i want a clock object so clock is equal to game dot time dot clock okay and we're gonna say clock dot tick uh, and then let's put our fps variable up here at 60 so that we limit this to 60 frames per second okay so let's run this now and see what we have currently and there we go we get brick breaker white background and the screen works okay 
very nice. Uh, next thing I want to do is probably just get a paddle on the screen that's moving around. Then we'll have the ball bouncing and then we'll add the actual bricks. Uh, so let's start with a paddle. Let's make a class. Let's call this paddle. Uh, inside paddle, I want a velocity. So I'm going to say X underscore vel. Actually, let's just go all capitals vel is equal to five. That's how quickly we'll be able to move in the horizontal direction. I'm going to say define a knit to initialize the paddle. I want an X, Y, width, and height. We'll also take in a color, I guess. Okay, and then we'll just say self.x is equal to x, self.y is equal to y, self.width is equal to width, and self.height is equal to height, and then self.color is equal to color. Okay, next, what I want to do is draw the paddle. So let's say define draw self and win and then we're going to say pi game dot draw dot rect and then we want to draw this on the window with the self dot color and then we need our rectangle here which is going to be self dot x self dot y self dot width and self dot height okay so that should actually allow us to draw the paddle on the screen so now let's create a paddle instance and then pass it to the draw function so we're going to say paddle is equal to paddle and we need to pass to it x y width height color so for the x and y we want it to probably be in the middle of the screen to start so i'm going to say actually let's do something here paddle underscore width is equal to let's make the paddle maybe 40 pixels wide and let's go paddle underscore height is equal to 20. Actually, maybe we'll just make it 10 because we want it to be pretty wide relative to the height. Uh, then we're going to go paddle and we're going to pass this. It's going to be width over two minus. And then this is going to be paddle width over two. So this goes directly in the middle of the screen. And then we're going to say that we want this to be at. I want it to be near the bottom of the screen, which is going to be the height of the screen minus the height of the paddle. So paddle height minus let's just go five so it's like five pixels off the bottom and then we'll go paddle width and paddle height and i also realized that i should probably make width and height here in all capitals because they're going to be constants so let's go width height uh and i could just use my what do you call this uh find and replace but i don't want to replace these ones so we'll just do this here and then height and width okay so let's run this now and oh okay uh it's missing color so let's add our color here of black all right and then we want to actually draw this on the screen so let's pass the paddle okay now let's go here and say paddle i'm going to say paddle dot draw like that and we need to pass the wind so let's do that all right Let's run and there we go we now have a paddle now that's looking a little bit small to me so let's make that a bit bigger let's go like 100 by 15 maybe and okay i think that's a better size paddle so now we want to move the paddle on the screen so that involves getting the different key press events so we want to get left or right key presses uh let me refresh myself on how to do this we're gonna say keys is equal to pi game dot and then what is this pi game dot get underscore pressed or something like that pi game dot keys dot get underscore pressed does that work let's just print that out i forget what this is i might have to look it up uh okay pi game has no attribute keys uh all right let me look this up pi game get keys pressed this is key dot get underscore pressed okay i was close so let's try that let's run and there we go okay now we have our keys so now i'm going to say if keys then this is high game dot uh and we'll use the arrow key so i'll say k underscore left then that means we're going left say if keys and then high game dot k underscore right then that means we're going right so now we need a method to move the paddle uh so let's just say define move self and then we'll just say direction and we'll say direction can either be one or negative one one will move us to the right negative one will move us to the left uh and then we will say self.x is equal to then self.x plus self.vel 
multiplied by the self dot direction or multiplied by the direction that's passed here. Okay, so now let's go and say paddle dot move. Want to go left, so we'll say negative one. And paddle dot move. Want to go right, so I'll put one. Let's try this and let's see. Okay, so now I can move the paddle. Now we need to make it so you don't go off the screen with the paddle. So let's just get rid of that. Uh, okay, so we only want to move if we're not going to be going off of the screen. So I'm going to say keys, pygame dot k underscore left and paddle dot x minus paddle dot vel will be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, now we'll copy this and put this here. And this is just going to be the opposite. Plus this is less than or equal to and then this will be the width of the screen okay try this and ah okay i forgot to include the width so i'll do that on that side let's see if that works though okay that works so we also need to add the width plus paddle dot width okay let's try this and there we go now we stop and honestly i think that's fast enough so now we need a ball that's going to bounce around the screen so let's go here and let's say class ball. Okay. Uh, we want to have, yeah, we're going to want a velocity for the ball as well. Let's just make it the same as the paddle. Let's say define init. Okay. Self X Y radius cover. Okay. Self dot X is equal to X. Self dot Y is equal to Y. Self dot radius. Come on. It's not giving me the autocomplete is equal to radius and self dot color is equal to color. Okay, let's have a define move. Uh, we're gonna have to also have a velocity here. So for now, let's just take in X pass and then let's go self dot X underscore vel equals zero self dot Y underscore vel equals zero. So we're gonna have to have a velocity in the X and Y direction, which is gonna be a little bit complicated. We're gonna have to use some trigonometry to figure out what that is, uh, but we'll use the base vel. And actually for now, let's just make the Y vel be negative self dot vel. And when we move, we're just gonna say self dot X plus equals self dot X vel and self dot Y plus equals self dot Y underscore vel. We're going to say define set underscore vel self x vel y vel and then self dot x vel equals x velocity and self dot y vel is equal to that and then we'll calculate this based on uh, kind of where we're bouncing so we'll do that in a minute that's going to be the most complicated part is uh having the ball bounce off of the different objects so yeah we'll handle that in a second for now though let's draw the ball on the screen so let's say ball is equal to ball uh, we need x y so for the x i want this to actually be the same as that so let's just call this center underscore x is equal to and then let's copy that so we're not rewriting this okay center underscore x and then this will be center underscore x and then we want to have a ball radius so we're going to say ball underscore radius is equal to uh is 10 going to be too large We'll try 10 for now. Okay. So then we're going to say this is going to be minus the ball radius. So we go a bit higher. Then for the Y, uh, again, this will be the same as that rather than minus five. Hmm. Let's go. Let's go actually. Paddle Y. Okay. I'm getting a bit ahead of myself here, but let's go paddle Y. And then this will be paddle Y. Okay, and then this will be paddle Y as well. Underscore Y. Uh, and then, sorry, actually, I didn't even need to subtract the ball radius. This is where I need to subtract the ball radius. Okay, so paddle Y minus ball radius. And then we need the ball radius. And then the color, we'll just make this black. Okay, then we need to draw the ball and we want to move it as well. So we're going to say ball dot move, although that should probably happen before we draw. So let's do that there. Okay. And now we need to take in ball. Okay. Ball dot draw win. And I realized I didn't actually, did I do anything for drawing the ball? No, I didn't. So let's do draw. 
define draw, self win, high game dot draw dot circle, draw it on the window, draw it on the self dot color. Uh, then we want to pass the center, so self dot x, self dot y, and then self dot color. And actually, not self dot color, self dot radius. Okay, so now we are able to draw the ball and we're moving it, so it should just go up on the screen. Let's try this now. And there you go, we can see that it goes up. Uh, now I do realize, let's look at this. It didn't look like it's directly in the center. Ah, and the reason it's not in the center is because of this. Uh, okay, actually I didn't really need, we'll keep center X, but actually let's just call this paddle X. And let's fix this now. Uh, since it's in the middle, we can just do width over two. So let's try this now. And there we go, it's in the middle of the screen. Okay, uh, now, want to bounce off all of the edges. This is where it gets a little bit complicated, uh, but we'll check for ball collision here, I guess. Um, actually, let's make a function. Define ball collision. I almost just did an arrow function there. Uh, let's just take in the ball, okay? And now we want to see if this is colliding with any of the walls. If it is, we need to adjust the X and Y velocity and, and go from there. Okay, so we're going to say if the ball dot x is less than or equal to zero, then this means we're colliding with the left wall. So if that is the case, then we need to change the velocity so that, let see, this is a bit complicated. Let me think about how we're going to do this. All right, so if I'm thinking about this, uh, if we're hitting the wall, I think all I need to do is just reverse the direction because we're not going to be calculating the velocity differently when we calc when we hit the wall sorry we just flip it so that if we're going this way now we go this way and we just go off the same angle that we came on at now the only time we'll change the velocity is when we hit the paddle uh, and that will be based on where yeah where on the paddle we hit and then we'll kind of calculate an angle and send the ball off either right left and you know at a different angle based on that so to do this we can just say uh, ball dot set vel is this what I called it yeah set vel and we're just gonna say for the x vel this is gonna be ball dot x underscore vel multiplied by negative one and then ball dot y underscore vel so this will just flip the direction uh, now this is actually gonna be the exact same thing if we're going on the right side so we can just say or ball dot x is greater than or equal to width of the screen okay so that should do it for the x and y direction now we want to do y so i'm going to say if or sorry for the x direction now we want to do y so if ball dot y is greater than uh yeah it's greater than or equal to height this would mean we're hitting the bottom of the screen or ball dot y is less than or equal to zero and we actually want to add the ball radius here so that doesn't look like we're kind of going slightly off the screen so we're going to say minus ball radius and this is going to be plus ball radius and then this is going to be minus ball radius then we'll do this exact same thing except we'll just flip the other direction so let's go here and then multiply it by negative one okay so now let's just call ball collision here so ball dot move ball collision and let's run this and we should just see it bouncing up and down on the screen uh, if I haven't messed anything up and there we go okay so it's just gonna bounce and now of course we need to shoot it off at you know some different angle otherwise we're gonna get the same thing so for the X fell let's just set this at 2 and let's see if this kind of bounced around the screen now okay so that looks proper to me uh, now we just need to adjust the velocity when it hits the paddle then we need to create a bunch of bricks and I think for how long are we in here? 15, 20 minutes ish. Uh, that's a pretty good progress. All right. So we have ball collision. Now we need to be colliding with the paddle. Now when it hits the paddle, this is a little bit more complicated because actually I think I'm gonna bring up Windows Paint here to, uh, to go through an explanation or Windows Ink. Where is Windows Ink? Do I have this? Windows Ink. Come on, how do I actually get to the app though? App whiteboard there we go microsoft whiteboard that's what they're calling it okay uh my configuring no. new one that's fine all right so if we have a screen like this we have a paddle and we have a ball 
the way that I want to do this is if the ball hits the paddle on the right side, then I want to bounce it off to the right. Now, the further to the right of the center of the paddle it hits, the further I want it to bounce off. And if it hits the middle, I want it to go straight up. If it hits like really close to the middle on the left, I'd want it to go kind of high to the left. That's how I'm going to do this uh, so that you have kind of control over what direction the ball is actually going in. So what we need to do when we hit the paddle here is we need to reverse the Y direction or reverse the Y velocity. And actually, we don't want to reverse, so we need to calculate uh, what it's going to be as long as well as the X velocity. So if we want to go, we have this kind of plane here. So this is a maximum of 90 degrees that we can possibly go in. So we just need to pick an angle. And once we pick an angle, then I can calculate the component for the X and the Y velocity. But how do we pick the angle? Well, if this is the center of the ball and we're here, we want to say that if you're at the very end, then this is practically 90 degrees, right? Whereas if you're in the middle, then this would be 45 degrees. So you just want to take the distance between this and the paddle. We want to then divide it by the length of the paddle. That would give us the percentage of the percentage towards the middle we are. So like 50%, 60%, etc. Then we could just multiply that percent by 90. That would then give us an angle kind of normalized between zero and 90. And then we can use the angle to determine the direction to bounce off. Um, I don't know if you're getting exactly what I'm saying, but that's that's what I'm going to do. I'm trying to go fast, so that's as, as much as I'll explain. If this was a tutorial, I would go in much more depth. Uh, anyways, let's try to calculate this now. So let's just make a function, even though I don't love making a function for this. I'd like to make it a method, but I think a function's fine. And we'll say ball underscore paddle underscore collision. We'll take the ball and the paddle. First of all, we need to know if we're hitting the paddle. So how do we know if we're hitting the paddle? Well, if the X is within the um, X plus the width of the paddle and the Y is like hitting the paddle. <laughs> so how do we do that? I'm going to say if ball dot X is, this is going to be less than paddle dot X plus paddle dot width and ball dot X is greater than or equal to to be greater than or equal to as well, uh, paddle.x, then that means that we are colliding in the x direction. So I'm going to say if, and I'm actually just going to put a not around all of this. Okay, so if not the case, then return. And now we want to check the y. So I'm going to say if the ball.y plus the ball dot radius is greater than or equal to the paddle.y. Yes, I think that should be good. Then again, we'll just put a knot around this because we'll just check the opposite and then we'll return if this is not the case because that means we're not colliding. Okay, so now we know that we're colliding. So now that we know we're colliding, we want to calculate the distance between the center of the ball to the center of the paddle. So that's actually pretty easy. We can just say that paddle underscore center is equal to ball.x plus ball.width over two. Okay, and then we're going to say distance underscore two underscore center is equal to the sorry and this needs to be the paddle not the ball paddle dot x and paddle dot width okay so we're going to say if the and this is the ball dot x now what am i subtracting here should i say ball dot x minus paddle center i guess so then if this is positive, we're on the right. If it's negative, we're on the left. So calculate the distance. And now we just want to calculate an angle. Um, OK, so how are we going to do this? So distance to center, paddle center. So now we're going to say percent underscore width is equal to. And this will be the distance to center divided by the paddle dot width. OK, and then we're going to say the angle is equal to the percent width multiplied by 90 degrees. Okay, and then we're gonna say angle in radians is equal to math dot radians of the angle. Let's import math here. Okay, so now that should be giving us the angle in radians. Yeah, okay, so that looks like that's correct. Now that we have that, we wanna calculate the two components of our um, 
what do you call it, of our angle here, or of our velocity, sorry. So to do that, let me just pull up my whiteboard again so I can remember the direction here. Okay, so let's just go to this. All right, come on, load faster. All right, so if I have a right triangle like this, and actually, let's think about this. Uh, if the ball comes in like this, it depends on what direction it comes in at. Um, hmm. Okay, right angle triangle. Let's go like this. We have this, which is going to be our vel that we know. This will be our angle. I should have drawn this from the other direction. Uh, okay. Like this. That's what I wanted. Okay. So right angle. This is the angle that we know. This is our velocity. Now, what? I, how I remember this is so ka, if I could write here, and to. So I think we just need this one. So this is opposite. This is hypotenuse and this is adjacent. So X is going to be cosine and Y is going to be sine. Okay. I know that probably meant nothing to you guys, but that's how I'm going to figure this out. So I'm going to say the X underscore vel is going to be equal to math dot sine of the angle radians multiplied, if I could find my asterisks here, by the, and this is going to be the ball dot vel. Okay. Now this will be the same for y, except this is gonna be cos. Okay, and then I'm gonna say ball dot set underscore vel. We're gonna say x underscore vel and then y underscore vel, but this needs to be negative. So say multiplied by negative one. Okay, uh, let's see if this works. I don't think it's gonna work, but let's try it and then we can debug it later. What did I actually call this function? Ball paddle collision. Okay, so let's try this. All right, so it actually went off on an angle. So wait, let's see. No way I did this right the first time. <laughs> it looks like I did it correct first shot. That's, that's shocking. Let's see if I go on this side. Nice. Okay, yeah, there we go. It looks like it's, it's working. All right, guys, I'm as shocked as you. I didn't really think I was going to do that perfect on the first try, but uh, I did because I guess I'm just that good. So uh, let's uh, let's continue. Okay, now we need some bricks. We need to break them. Uh, so let's make a class for bricks. Class brick. Okay. And define underscore underscore knit. Okay, self x, y, width, height. I guess we might as well just pass a health and a color as well. So self.x equals x, self.y equals y, self.width equals width, self.height equals height, self.health equals health, self.color equals color. Okay, uh, nice. So now that we have that, we want to draw this. So I said define draw self win. Uh, we're going to say high game dot draw dot dot rect. And then this is going to be on the window with self dot color. And then we need our rect. So self dot x, self dot y, self dot width, self dot height. Okay, that's it for draw. Now I want collide. Now this is just gonna return true or false if the ball is colliding with this brick at the current point in time. So self ball. Now, just like I did here, let's just copy this. Okay, and then rather than paddle, we'll just replace this with self. Okay, and self. And self. Okay, now this will be a return false, return false, and return true. All right, now we need to generate a bunch of bricks and then draw them on the screen. Uh, I'm also just gonna say define hit self. Actually, yeah, that's fine. Let's say self.health minus equals one. Okay, and then here we'll just say self.hit. 
Then we're gonna want something to where we like delete the brick if it has less than uh, less than zero health or, or zero health. We'll just get rid of it. We'll do that later. Okay, so let's generate a bunch of bricks. Let's say define generate underscore bricks like that. And let's just take in how many do we want? Like the number of rows and columns of bricks, I guess. Rows calls. Okay. So first of all, if we have a width of 800, then I have a few options. I guess I could just do like eight 100 pixel bricks or like eight 90 pixel bricks with gap. Hmm. Interesting how I want to do this, but let's let's just write something that does this. Okay, so we'll say four row in range rows. We'll say four call in range calls. Okay, now we're going to say bricks is equal to an empty list. And I want to find the brick width. So the brick width should be equal to the width of the screen, uh, integer divided by the number of rows. But I want to have some gap between the different bricks. So I need to figure out how exactly I'm going to integrate the gap here. Um, we could just make all of the bricks slightly, slightly smaller. So if I want a gap like two pixels, I guess I could just subtract two and then that should be fine. So let's actually just add gap though. Gap is equal to two and let's say minus the gap. Okay, and let's put this here. All right, so let's say brick is equal to brick. And then this is gonna be, and we need to determine the X. So we have row call. So how do we do this? This is gonna be row multiplied by the brick width. Okay plus the gap, I think that's gonna be X. And then for the Y, or sorry, this is the other way around, call multiplied by brick width plus gap. And then this will be row multiplied by, and then this is gonna be the brick height, which we'll decide in a second, plus the gap. Okay, so brick underscore height is equal to, and let's just go with like 30 for now. Okay, then we want the brick width, brick width, come on, and the brick height. This is actually turning out to be one of the ch most challenging parts here, generating the bricks. Okay, so bricks dot append, brick like that, and then let's return the bricks. Okay, now we want to draw all of the bricks and check for a collision with them. So let us, oh, we also need to pass a color and a height here so for the color for now let's just go with green and sorry the health let's just go with i don't know maybe like five okay so now let's pass the bricks to our draw function and let's draw them where is draw okay bricks i'm gonna say four brick in bricks then brick dot draw on the window okay then we want to check for collision so it'll really be the same thing here we're gonna say and oops this needs to go to draw say four brick in bricks then brick dot collide ball and then we'll say if brick dot health is less than zero less than or equal to zero then we want to delete that brick so we're gonna have to do this bricks to delete and we're gonna say bricks to delete dot append brick okay then we're gonna say actually i can do this in a better way make a copy of bricks and rather than this we'll just say bricks dot remove brick okay uh we don't need that anymore all right so let's run this and see what we get and we get an error what have i done wrong here it says what uh bricks is not defined ah that's because we didn't ever actually generate the bricks and say bricks is equal to generate bricks 
Uh, let's go, actually rows calls, let's go three rows of 10 columns and see what we get. I think it's gonna look a little bit messed up. But yeah, okay, less than equal, not square between ints of string and int. Uh, brick.health, why, how have I done this wrong? Where's my brick? Ah, health and then color, that's why. So where am I generating? Generate here, we need to just swap those around. Make that green, okay. All right, so let's see here. What is what is happening here? Okay, something something serious. Something is seriously wrong. Um, okay, brick width, brick height, plus gap, brick height plus gap. Okay, let's just try setting this like something small. Let's make them square, and let's see. Hmm. Curious why this isn't working. Should be zero zero. Okay, let's just, let's just see this here. Okay, so we get one brick for row and range rows for call and range calls. Column times brick width plus gap. Hmm. All right. So now we have to actually think for a second here. How have I messed this up? I assume the bricks are like overlapping each other. Bricks.append brick. We also need to make it so when we collide with it, we set the ball, we reverse the ball velocity. That's potentially why as well. So let's go here to collide and say ball.setVel. And then this will be ball.x underscore vel. And then ball.y underscore vel multiplied by negative one. Okay. Let's just run this here. Let's see if I can hit one of these bricks. Okay, so there is a bunch of them. Okay, so that's why. They're all like stacked with each other. Apparently the gap isn't really doing anything. Although I don't know why it's not doing anything. I'm just messing up the gap here. Let's see. So we have gap two, brick width of 20, brick height of 20. We have plus the gap. Brick width, okay, 20, 20. So if we have column times the brick width, plus the gap. Maybe it's because we need to do plus gap times the column. I don't think that could be right. Oh, there we go. Okay, so that's doing something now. All right, so let's go back here now and brick width, row time, brick width, brick height. Why is the width and the height so, so off though? Oh, it's because we need to do the same thing for this gap gap times row okay let's try this uh oops multiplied by row okay there we go now we're getting what we're looking for okay so now for the brick width this is going to be the rows integer divided no the width integer divided by the rows minus the gap is that gonna work? No, okay, so now, ah, it's because we need to do it by the calls, that's why. Let's try this now. Okay, that seemed to work. Whoa, what's going on here? Okay, so clearly, clearly something's a little bit messed up here in terms of the, the collision with the, uh, <laughs> with the bricks. Uh, okay, so we'll fix the collision with the bricks in a second, but for now, at least though, we're generating bricks. So let's let's fix the collision here. It's got to be inside of here. So if not, ball.x. Okay. Less than or equal to self.x plus self.width. Okay. And ball.y greater than or equal to self.y. Okay. And, aha, it seems to be less than or equal to self.y plus self.height. That would be why that wasn't working. Okay, so let's try this now. And all right, it bounced off, but it's because I'm not including the radius that it's looking all weird, I believe. Ball.y minus ball.radius, that would be y. Let's try this. Okay, and it's gonna bounce, and there we go. Now, I think what I wanna do is just maybe darken the shade if it's, um, what do you call it? If it's been hit a few times? So let's see if I can actually figure that out or maybe add some opacity or something. Let's just see if, if there's like an easy way to darken color 
high game. How do I change? Okay, darken color RGB. How would you do this? Okay. Oh, it's even in Python. Perfect. Something like this, maybe. All right. So let's do the good old don't even read it and just copy it. And wait, why is there two colors? I don't want two colors. I just want one color. Oh, it's going to give me a range between the two colors. Okay. So let's do that. Um, we put this inside a brick. Gives me one between color A and color B. Now, okay, that's fine. We're just going to need two colors then. So let's just say colors, colors. And then we'll say self.color is equal to this. Uh, okay. Now, when we collide, if we hit, we will change the color by interpolating it between the two colors. So we'll say self.color is equal to self dot that and then color a will be actually we can just do this asterisk self dot colors and then the time will be self dot health uh, between it takes a value between zero and one so we're gonna say we want max health so the max underscore health is equal to let me just say health just so we can divide and then get a number between one and zero so it'll be self dot health divided by self dot max health so if it's uh like the max health then it's one if our health is lower then we should get darker or whatever between the two colors so now we need to pass two colors to our bricks so let's go here and let's just go like green and red for the colors and let's see how broken this is now Okay, so we got an error here. Ah, it's because it needs to be RGB. I can't pass the string. So for green, this is going to be red, green, blue. So 0, 255, 0, and then 255, 0, 0. Okay, let's try this now. And nice. Okay, and it gets slightly darker. All right, now let's see what happens if we hit the same one again, if we can accomplish that. Come on. Okay, and it gets darker again. So, I mean, this isn't really the best way to do this, I guess, because it's kind of hard to tell what health you're at, but you can see that we're darkening. Now, let me just change the health to just be three so that we can actually see if we're deleting them. And then I guess we just need to do a check if all of the bricks are gone and then you win the game and then it would restart. And that seems good to me. We also could implement, oh, we need to implement live. So if it goes off the screen, you lose a life. Okay, we'll do the lives first, but let's change the health here. Where am I passing the health to be? Is this three? Let's just make it two. Okay, and then run. All right, so straight up again. And there we go, it's gone. Okay, nice, so now let's do lives. So we're gonna go here and say lives is equal to three. And then we wanna draw that on the screen. So let me just pass the lives. Let's get some font going. So we'll say pygame.init just to initialize the font. We'll say the lives underscore font is equal to pygame dot font dot sys font uh you guys already know we're going comic sans of course the go-to font size just go with 40 because it's gonna be lives that's fine for draw we'll now take in lives and we will say uh lives underscore text equals and then this will be the lives font dot render and we want to render actually an f string here of lives and then this will be lives okay and then one and the color will be just be black that's fine okay then we're gonna say hi game dot actually no win dot blit lives text and then where do we want this uh, i probably want this in the bottom left or bottom right hand corner so just to make it easy we can go with like 10 for the x and then height minus lives underscore text dot get underscore height minus 10 
and that should be good okay let's see if it shows up now and there we go now we have three lives so now we need to subtract lives so where we have ball paddle collision um that's not what we want we want ball collision here this is actually what we we want to check if you didn't hit the paddle but you hit the edge of the screen so in fact we can just make a check in here we don't really need to make a function for this so we're going to say let's add a comment lives check if ball dot y is less than or actually greater than ball dot y plus ball dot radius if this is greater than or equal to the height of the screen then lives minus equals one and we're going to reset the ball to the where where was this originally set with over two and then this so i'll just just copy this and reset it i'll say ball dot x is equal to that and ball dot y is equal to this okay uh we reset the ball and then say ball dot set underscore vel we'll say the ball actually it's gonna be zero and then ball dot vel but this needs to be negative so multiplied by negative one all right and i think i'm almost getting to an hour at this point i don't know exactly because i didn't really start a clock on my end which i probably should have done but let's see here okay let's see if i lose life all right there you go Ah, so actually the ball should probably restart at the paddle position. So that's a bit of a mistake. Yeah, okay. We want it to restart at our paddle position. So we don't want to do this. So ball.x is going to be equal to paddle.x plus paddle.width over 2. And then the ball.y will just be equal to paddle.y minus the ball radius. I think that's correct. So let's try this now. Okay, there you go. So it restarts on our paddle. Nice. Okay, so now that we've done that, we want to do something if you lose all of your lives. So we're gonna say if lives less than equal to zero, then we need to restart the game. So pass for right now, but how are we going to restart? Well, we need to reset all of this. So we'll just copy these. And this is not ideal, but <laughs> This is how I'm going to do it because we're in a bit of a crunch for time here. Just reset all that. And then we need to show something on the screen saying you lost and go from there. So we're going to say, do we want to just use the lives font? Let's just save us some time. Lives font dot render. You lost exclamation point one. And then the color will be red. And we will say win dot blint, and this is going to be lost text. Okay. Lost underscore text. We want this in the middle of the screen. So this is going to be width over two minus lost underscore text dot get underscore width divided by two. And then this is height, if we could spell that correctly, over two minus lost text dot get underscore height over two and then we need to refresh the display and delay so pygame dot display dot and then this will be update and then pygame dot time dot delay and we'll just delay 5000 now is this what is this convert a number string delay milliseconds yeah so 5000 be five seconds in fact let's just go 3000 we won't agonize you too much for that and that should that should do everything i think um ball equals yeah paddle equals this we're just creating a new instance so that's fine bricks okay yeah let's try this so what happens if we lose all three of our lives okay that's one done okay that's two done and that is all we lost okay let's see if it resets and there you go then the game resets all right, so that's pretty much it for Brick Breaker. I mean, I guess we want to do something if we win, but I don't really need to. I mean, okay, I guess we could just implement that because we have enough time. So let's do this. We'll say if the len of bricks is equal to zero, then we want to do the exact same thing. So 
Can I? Hmm. I don't like, I don't love continuing to rewrite all of this. So let us, how could I do this? Let's just do an inside function. Reset. I don't know if this is going to work or not, but let's, let's try this. Reset and then just copy that. Actually, no, just copy what I had here. Okay, so reset. All right, come on, go back. Then it's just this. I'm actually gonna put this in another function. I'm gonna say define display text. Just take in text here. Okay, and then rather than lost text, this will just be text. And actually, text render is what this needs to be. Okay, and then rather than that, this will be text. Text underscore render and text underscore render. Okay, I think that's fine. Now let's just try to use this. So this should make this a lot cleaner. I'm just gonna say reset and then display text. You lost exclamation point. And then we'll do the exact same thing here and say reset, but you won. Okay, uh, let's try this. So I just want to test again if it's going to reset uh, if we lose all our lives. So let's see this. All right, you lost. Okay, so that did work. Let's see if it resets. Aha, okay, so it didn't reset. So, uh, and we're going to get, a, yeah, okay, I need to just exit this, force quit that. Is this still going? No, okay. So reset didn't work. Um, and it's because these variables here, hmm. There's a way to do this, but I, should I just, I think if I do this, then it will work. So let's try that. Again, I, this isn't the best idea to be doing this. There's also another keyword I think I can use to, uh, to, to do that, but let's just, let's see if this works. Okay, so you lost definitely works. Yeah, okay. So that's still not working. Uh, okay, quit that. All right, how would I fix this? Um, this and this we can take out. I think I can just do ball.x is equal to this. And ball dot y is equal to this. Okay. Yes. No. What the heck am I doing? This is what I want. Ball dot y to equal to. This is ball dot x. Uh, bricks and this we cannot do here. So let's go and do them here okay and here can I do the rest inside of this reset function let's see I should be able to if I rather than recreating this I just modify the attributes so to say paddle dot x equals paddle x and then paddle underscore y equals paddle y but this should be dot y okay let's see if this if this works this time not confident but let's give it a shot and then we should be just at about the hour mark so i can try to play through one game uh see how that goes and then i guess we'll wrap up the video there okay you lost come on reset okay there you go so that actually works properly i just can't redefine the variable uh based on i guess the way i've done it there okay so let's try to play through a game here let's just make sure everything's working i don't see any bugs Let's try to get rid of a few bricks uh, and then once that's done we'll we'll wrap up the video now while i'm playing this guys i will ask you if you enjoy this type of video of course make sure you like the video uh but let me know it, what other uh challenges you think i should do here now i also want to try to like bounce the ball off of multiple bricks and see if that's gonna work or if we're gonna get any issues with that so let's try yeah, okay, so there you go. We just bounced off multiple bricks. That seemed to work fine, so that's good. 
Okay, let's see here. Bounce. Because what I did is, oh, I made it so when you hit a brick, it reverses the Y velocity. However, if you hit the side of the brick, it shouldn't do that. So I probably should, I probably should have fixed that. I'm not gonna have time to fix that right now, but that would be a bug here. If you hit the side of the brick, what's gonna happen is it's still gonna change the Y velocity, uh, even though that, that shouldn't happen. I need to kind of check what side of the brick you're hitting. So I determine what to set the velocity to. But yeah, anyways, as I was saying, yeah, you could see it kind of like glitched through the, through the bricks there, right? As I was saying, I wanted uh, to know what other challenges you guys would have for me in terms of coding. This one I think was like much easier than the Minesweeper one I did. The Minesweeper one was a bit more complicated with the algorithm and how to check if, uh, what is it, if there's a mine around or what the number should be on the, on the different block or whatever you call it. And that's okay. That's definitely a bug right there. But yeah, let me know. So actually, I don't think I'm going to play through this whole thing. I'm kind of bored already. This is a pretty boring game from what I remember. Anyways, guys, I think I'm going to wrap it up here. I don't think any of you really need to watch me continue to play Brick Breaker. If you enjoy this type of content, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel. Also, I do have a course. It's called Programming Expert. You can check it out from the link in the description if you want to learn how to code in Python just like this. I will see you in another YouTube video.